Offbeat Cinema, brought to you by Mighty Taco. Enjoy the great taste anywhere at MightyTaco.com. Terrapin Station, the world's Grateful Dead headquarters at TerrapinStationBuffalo.com. Yes, but even so, we are here to celebrate summer. And we're going to do it with a movie that celebrates summer, as well as beach girls, as well as rubber suit monsters. Ha, man, you know, I could totally dig that, but I, I really have not been in the sun in such a long time because I'm always thinking, as soon as I hit the sun, I'm gonna burst into flames like a vampire. Well, I think, Bird, you'd have more of a hideous sun demon kind of effect and turn into a big lizard. Okay, okay, boys. No bickering. It is such a beautiful day here on the beach. And, you know, cats, it was crowded with all kinds of people, but as soon as we got here, they all took off. Well, you know, I just say more room for us to enjoy the beach. But, you know, because I really dig the beach. I, I love the... The wind in my hair, the salty spray, and you know, you know. Well, you know, it, I don't dig the sand because sand kind of gets everywhere, and you can never get rid of it. And 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 seagulls too, you know, because they'll take anything uh, that ain't nailed uh, down. Uh, and, uh, and you know what else? Oh, I, I okay, really, okay, big Kahuna, we we get it. You are one with the outdoors. You are one with the beach. But we are here to bring you. Beach Girls and the Monster from 1965. Although it was made in 1964, it was released in 1965, and it stars John Hall, who back in the day was the Invisible Man at Universal Studios. Of course, this film is a long way from that. And uh, oh, and you'll see a credit for the music for this film to Frank Sinatra Jr. Which would be great if he actually did the music for this <laughs> film. <laughs> but he did not. He did not. In fact, he had nothing to do with the music in this film. Uh, but they were able to use his name for the well, publicity in services. in any case, yeah. I think that calls for margaritas and Mai Tais and mojitos. Sit back and enjoy the weather where it's fine for the beach girls and the monster. Oh, man, Zelda, I dig that the most. I mean, what could go together better than the beach girls and the monsters. How far out can you get? Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family, bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. Dad, baby, dance, come and dance with me. Hear the beat of the pounding sea. Ride, baby, ride, come ride with me. Let your feet go easy and be. Glide, baby, glide right into my arms Like waves coming to the shore Sigh, baby, sigh, let me hear you sigh That's what I'm waiting for Come on, they're playing our rhythm Let's keep with that beat with them We'll move our feet with them Ain't no to surf her heaven Kiss, baby, kiss, just 
just one more time Put your lips so close to mine Dance, baby, dance to the supper dance Woo! You're moving just fine Kiss, baby, kiss just one more time Put your lips so close to mine Dance, baby, dance to the surfer dance Woo, you're moving just fine Keep on pushing that line Surfing, baby, oh mine Surfing, baby, oh mine Woo! Surfing, baby, oh mine Surfing, baby, oh mine Surfing baby of mine Surfing baby of mine Hey, Tom, what are you doing out there? Making like a fish? Hey, do you want to wait for him? Nah, uh, I'm hungry. We can starve before he gets in. I'm with you. Hey, take it easy, sport. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
Where's the body? It's right down there. <laughs> Where's the body? She's over there, Sheriff. Follow me. All right, where were you kids when this thing happened? Well, I was just sitting over there with the picture we started. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, one at a time. What's your full name? Richard Lindsay. Where do you live, Richard? Right up there in that house. Hey, Scott, come here. What do you make of this? Claw prints leading into that culvert. Where does the other end go? It dumps into the ocean. It's not the claw print of any fish in this area. The men at the lab can't tie it down either. They suggested that you, being an authority on fish, might know what it is. Well, it's amazing. It looks exactly like the South American Fantigua fish. That's a carnivorous man-eater. It can live in or out of water. It weighs about 100 pounds. Well, that's a pretty good size, but whatever made that print had to weigh at least 250 pounds or more. Well, I'm afraid that's the best I can do for you. It certainly looks like the Fantigua to me. It could be a mutation, of course. Some of the studies we've been doing here at the lab on mutations are amazing. Mutated? Could this uh, Fantigua fish grow large enough to come out on land? I mean, could it breathe out of water? Oh, yes, it could breathe out of water if it could retain fluid in its lungs. And as a mutation, our studies show it could grow quite large. I hope you can take one alive, Sheriff. It would be a boon to sign. Now, hold on, Doctor. I still believe that a human clawed that girl to death, not a fish, no matter how big. And we'll get him, too. Probably some madman. Or one of those surfers that hang around the beach all the time. They're capable of anything, even murder. You think so? Strange. I always found them to be a nice bunch of kids just trying to find themselves. <laughs> They'll find themselves in your jail one day. I tell you, Sheriff, something's got to be done about them. The boys are, are nothing but a bunch of loafers, and the girls are little tramps. They, they contribute absolutely nothing to a decent society. Well, that's not my department, Dr. Lindsay. Right now, I've got to find a murderer. Thank you for your help. I'll tell the men at the lab about this uh, Fantigua fish just to be on the safe side. I'll let you know if we find one. Uh, please do. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. swimming just where she was killed just a few hours before. It could have been me. I should have stayed around. I missed all the excitement. Excitement? Bunny's dead. Doesn't that mean anything to you? What should it mean to me? What's the matter, Richard? Sorry it isn't me dead on that beach? You know, we should really try to get along together, for your father's sake. Just one big, happy family. Save some of that jazz for Dad, Vicki. He's the one that needs it. Why, I'm a very loving little wife. Don't give me that. I know exactly what you've been doing. Oh, and what have I been doing? Just keep away from me, Vicki. Don't push me too far. Why, is that any way to talk to your stepmother? A stepmother? You're not fit to be anybody's mother. Don't ever do that again, Vicki. I'm warning you. Warning me? Ha! Now you sound like Otto when he's in one of his crazy tantrums. Vicki? Richard? Where are you? Remember what I said. In the bar, darling.
Good evening, Vicky. Hi, son. I bumped into the sheriff as I was pulling in. He told me about Bunny. I'm sorry, son. It's a tragic thing to have happen. Oh, yes, poor Richard. It's upset him terribly. I've got to get over to Janie's dad. She's been taking this pretty hard. Oh, I was hoping we could spend some time together. Some interesting things have been happening over at the lab. Remember that experiment you were helping me with? Dad, not tonight. Jane's been half out of her mind over this. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Can I see you a minute, Rich? Good evening, sir. Evening, Mark. See you in the morning, Dad. Let's go to your room. He hasn't too much time for you lately, has he? No, he hasn't been in the lab for months. Ever since the accident, he's let his work slip. Just hangs around the beach with those tramps. Vicky, I just can't understand his attitude. I think Mark is playing on his sympathy. That limp's pretty convenient. It's gotten him a nice home. I thought you liked Mark. I was just being nice. That was over a year ago. How long is he going to stay? Well, after all, Richard was driving when they had the accident. He still feels responsible for the injury to Mark's leg. So his brakes went out. It wasn't his fault. Does he have to carry Mark for the rest of his life? Do we all? Vicky, he's my son and this is his home. If he wants Mark here, if he feels it's important, we'll all have to make the best of it. Your son, everything for your son. What about me? That Mark, the sculptor, he's got his pottery all over this house. I thought you liked posing for him. You said he was doing your statue. Oh, Otto, you're blind. Can't you see he's using you? He's taking advantage of you. Why, that accident was the luckiest thing that ever happened to him. And to ensure his soft touch, he'll lean more and more on Richard. He'll take him away from you completely, just as he's taken him from your lab. He can't do that. Not after all the plans I've made. Richard and I are going into research. I've planned it for years. Oh, Lord, am I sick of hearing about that. Otto, you're hurting me. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Until I met you, my only happiness was planning for my son. Vicki, I love you both very much. Nothing or no one will ever take either of you from me. All right, Otto, let's forget it. You get so emotional. Oof, I'll be bruised for weeks. I'm sorry, dear. I, I didn't mean to hurt you. All right, Otto, let's go. It's late. Had you forgotten the board of directors dinner tonight? Good Lord, I, I did forget. I don't suppose we could get out of it. Hardly. You know, I do so look forward to those cozy little dinners. Let's talk about the murder tonight and really shake them up. Oh, Vicky, stop it. Come on, let's go. You're wrong about Vicky. You just don't understand her. You don't give her a chance. Mark, look, let's forget it. What do you want to see me about? Oh, a couple of things. One, Dale dropped by some film he said you wanted to see. Well, the film on Hawaii, where is it? It's on the projector. And I wanted to show you something I did. Let's take a look at it. I'll just have time to run it before I go to Janie's. What is it with you and this surfing jazz? All of a sudden, it's such a big thing. Listen, Mark, I'm just beginning to realize there's more to life than just, uh, test tubes and fish. I'm gonna live a little before I settle down again. I'm gonna grab my girl and get married, and then I'm gonna surf on the beach at Waikiki before I get too old to enjoy it. I've got a feeling that is not what your father had in mind. I know. I haven't found a way to tell him yet, but well, I've got to live my own life, Mark, not the one Dad's picked out for me. Life's too short. Today proved that Bunny's gone just like that. I just want to store up some happiness for Janie and me before our time comes. Rich, if the accident or my living in this house has caused you to change your plans, to give up your career... Mark, the accident just opened my eyes to what I've been doing. Or rather, what I haven't been doing. But I want you to stop taking life so seriously. Man, it goes by too fast. Too fast to waste. Come on, get the lights. Will you see these films? The surf is great. <laughs>
to show these to Janie, she'll flip. Hey, I've got to get going. Hold it, hold it. Now, there's something else I want to show you, and it'll only take a minute. All right, buddy, what is it? It's in my room. Come on. It's over here. Rich, this is what I wanted you to see. It looks like Bunny. I used her as a model a couple of months ago. I was wondering, do you think her folks would like to have it now? I'm sure they would. Why don't you take it over to them? Well, it might be better if you took it over. I've never met her folks. Hey, come on, Mark, why don't you get off it? Stop being afraid of people. You made it, you take it over. Yeah, I guess you're right. All right, I'll take it over tomorrow. Yeah, I've got to get going. Say, why don't you come with me? We'll stop by Bunny's house on the way back. Oh, I, I can't tonight. I've, I've got to work on Vicky's statue. Yeah. I'll see you. Vicky. Are you sure you don't mind if we don't go down on the beach today? After Bunny, I... Of course not, I understand. Besides, there's plenty of sun around the pool. You know, I still can't realize she's gone. Such a horrible death. The killer must be some kind of monster to claw up like that. Don't feel bad, honey. But let's try and forget it. I still love you, remember? What a touching little scene. Hi, Vicky. I see you brought one of your little mermaids home. How nice. Well, I'm going down to the beach before I play model for Mark. So you'll have the house all to yourself. Have fun, children. Don't, Richard. Let's go to the bar. I want to talk to you. Okay. You want a Coke? No, thanks. It's too bad the killer made a mistake. He should have hit Her Highness, the evil queen. That's nothing to joke about. Who's joking? The charming conversation she gave us just now will show you what's on her mind most of the time. How a man like Dad fell into that. He's well known in the field of oceanography. And her cute little title for him in company is Fish Doctor. Real dignity, huh? I know how you feel, Richard. But she's still his wife, and there's no way you could change that. If he could only see her for what she really is. Two-timing, cheating... Hey, are you going to let her ruin our whole day? I thought we were going swimming. You're right, lady. Come on. It's amazing. Every time she sees me, she's just got to bug me. Of course. She knows just how to get you mad, and you haven't sense enough to realize that she's doing it on purpose. You're not terribly bright, are you? You know, I really don't know what I see in you. Oh, that's so. Yeah, yes. Pretty fancy, but watch this. Hey, Rich. Hi, Janie. Hi, Mark. Come on in, Mark. The water's great. Oh, I can't. Vicky's coming over to pose this afternoon. She'll be here any minute. Not this minute. She just left for a swim down at the beach. Oh? She'll be gone at least an hour. 
Come in for a swim, Mark. It'll do your leg good. No, no, I can't. Uh, maybe later. Come on, Mark. It won't hurt you to get wet. Oh, come on. Wet. Oh, cut it out, Rich. That isn't funny. Hey, Mark, he's only kidding. Oh, sorry. Kind of edgy today, I guess. I, uh, just left Bunny's folks. I took over that statue I showed you. Well, how'd they like it? Oh, fine. But they're taking it pretty hard. Police can't give them much information. Still no clue as to who killed her. And Bunny's dad is really upset. You wouldn't believe what he thinks of the sheriff. Oh, you can't blame him. The whole thing gives me the creeps. It was so horrible. What gets me is we were all so close and couldn't do anything. If only she could have screamed to let us know she was in trouble, maybe we could have reached her in time. Well, her parents don't blame any of you. They understand. I guess we'll just have to leave it up to the police and see what they find out. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, you two are supposed to be swimmers, so swim! Hey, so it's all right for you to throw me in the pool, huh? You're the water lover around here, sport, not me. Oh, cut out, Tarzan! That's right, you Tarzan, her Jane. <laughs> oh, you Satan! <laughs> hey, I better get out of here before I get killed. I'll see you later. You know, he's really a good guy, but I worry about him. He spends too much time by himself. You're going to be by yourself if you don't watch out. You never pay any attention to me. Oh, wow. Okay, Esther Williams, you're pretty fancy, but watch this. Watch close now. This is the kind of dive you won't see every day. <laughs> I can believe that. Want to see where I came from? Hold your breath. First step, the reservoir. Hold your breath again. It'll only take a minute. Here we are. Mountains, snow, forest. Wouldn't you like to live up here? Nice, clean water. Lots of it. See that beaver? See that moose? They like clean water. Getting downstream now. See those ducks? Those fish like clean water, too. Let's us go fishing. Clean water is good for everybody.
the only kind of fish you get in this dirty water. Let's get away from here. And see what's wrong. Look at that. here can't even take a drink what's going to happen to those poor fish Late? Only about an hour and a half. Where were you? I thought I'd take a swim. Well, you're here now. Shall we get started? Don't be so grumpy, darling. 
I'm ready. You're in the wrong position. You know, you artists fascinate me. You're so different from other men. Not in all ways. Men are men. Before I married Otto, I had a lot of friends. All men, of course. They're so much easier to get along with. You keep moving. But now I don't have any friends anymore. I'll bet you know what it's like to be lonely. You do understand. Oh, you really are lonely, aren't you? Please, Vicky. Oh, Mark, don't you think we run this little game into the ground? But Vicky. But Vicky, what? Did you think I'd make love to a cripple? Be grateful for small favors, Mark. I could kill her. I could kill her! Dad should be out of the lab any minute now. Thanks for coming along. I've got a feeling he's going to lecture me. I'm not up to it today. Uh-oh, here comes Big Daddy now. Thanks for picking me up. Well, Mark, how'd it go at the doctor's today? About the same. Still no feeling in the leg. I keep telling him we should be giving it more exercise. Why don't you come swimming with us tonight and work it out a little? Swimming? I thought you said you'd come back to the lab with me after dinner. I'm sorry, Dad. Janie and I are going to a big party down on the beach tonight. I should have checked with her sooner. Check with Jane? What about your work? How much longer do you think I can make excuses for you at the lab? I want to talk to you about that, but not now. Why not? Mark knows how I feel. We can talk in front of him. It's got nothing to do with Mark. I'm not so sure. You weren't like this before the accident. Look, I've spent years and money building up a reputation for you to follow him. Now look, son, what are you thinking of? Dad, look out. I've had enough accidents for a while. I'm sorry. But you're driving me crazy with this I don't care attitude of yours. Richard, what are you going to do? Rich, pull over here. We're almost home. I can walk back. Then you and your dad can talk it out. Buddy, what kind of a friend are you? Mark's right. Let him out. We want to talk this out right now. You said I needed the exercise, remember? So long. All right, Dad. Now hear me out without interrupting, OK? OK. While I was in the hospital, I realized how close Mark and I came to being killed. You know, they say your whole life flashes before you? Well, mine did. Dad, ever since high school and college, all I've done is study and work. We never did take those vacations we talked about. We spent them all in the lab. I thought you liked the work we did together. Enjoyed oceanography. I did. I do. But I want a little vacation. I want to find out about the other things in life. Dad, I want to play a little. Play? Good Lord, Richard, there's more to life than play. It's a serious business. Now, these past few months are lost. You can never get them back again. I don't want them back. I wouldn't give up what I found for anything. And what have you found? That you can swim in the ocean on a board? Do you think those beach tramps will help your career? Or do you expect me to finance your playtime forever? I have the money Mother left me if I'm too much of a burden for you. Uh. Hey, 
hate cats and chicks. You know, when, when uh, they tell Bird to park it, he's got to go all the way. And here I am in a parking lot parking it. But this is a special parking lot, babies. I'm telling you, we are at the world famous art park in Niagara Falls, New York. And it's been around for uh, many, many years and it's played host to all kinds of artists, musicians, and all kinds of cool people since the 70s. Can you dig that? And you know, like we're, we're in this lot and I, I heard that there's like uh, artists that painted this stuff and I wanna go look for them and get their rap. I wanna get their story. But like right now, all I see are these two random dudes playing tennis. What the, let's, how far out can you get, man? Let's go see what these guys are all about. Maybe they have the 411. Dig it. You know, there's, there's part of this is yellow, but I don't see any bricks, so I really can't call this a yellow brick road, and I don't really know where this is going, except there's those two guys still over there, and they got a tennis ball and a tennis wreck. Maybe they know what I can do to find these artists. Come on, let's go see what's up. Hey, uh, uh, fellas. Slice! Did you lose a tennis ball? Oh. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, it, it kind of fell right in my lap a little while ago, and, uh, oh, my bad. well, sorry. you know, my dilemma is uh, I, I came out here and I'm, like, digging all this art, and I'm looking for the artist, but I'm just seeing you two guys playing tennis, so, you know where the artists are? We are the artists. It's us, man. We're volleying ideas. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're volleying ideas. Volleying ideas. Softballs. That's how we communicate. With tennis rackets, how far out can you get? Wait a minute! You guys are, the music is our mural dudes! That's right, the Solo Ross. Wow, the Solo Ross! These live are, live and in person in, in our park. Rob nice and, and shiny. Matt, Rob Lynch and Matt Sigourney, <laughs> Buffalo Originals, Niagara Falls Originals. And uh, I'm standing on like uh, kind of a giant finger puppet. Finger puppet! <laughs> Wiggly. <laughs> 25 cents. He's grooving. All right, now you gotta you He's gotta wiggling. tell me I'm like my head's about to explode with all this beautiful visionary imagery. How did it come about? What happened here? Wow, Bird, this is a it's a beautiful, complex project and probably a little quick to explain fast, but I'll do my best and please chime in, Maddie. <laughs> it is a collaboration between our park, the Solar Ross, us two, and uh, a program through our park called Our Park Bridges which is uh, a, a nice woman, a wonderful woman named Cynthia Pagato, who's basically a liaison between us, our park, and the special needs community. People Inc. Artisan's Edge and, and, and the uh, Parkinson's group. The Parkinson's community, wow. yes. Yeah. Wow. So we've been having, uh, during these COVID times, we've been having weekly Zoom meetings with a bunch of wonderful folks who've been feeding us uh, imagery, ideas, and, and we've just been kind of playing tennis back and forth with these images. Those images then uh, are put, you know, randomly, but hopefully artistically, all over this 400 by 400 foot lot. Let me get this straight. Yeah, it's a lot, to, it's a lot to digest. My head's usually spinning, but it's just going a little faster <laughs> right now. It's a lot so to take in. That you are telling me that you are communicating with these, these special needs folks by Zoom, Yeah. and they're giving you uh, uh, visuals and imagery and ideas, yeah. you're sketching it out. Uh, while they're like while we're zooming with them, we're sketching out ideas, and then they land on this parking lot. Yeah, an incredible. That's really a bridge. It is a that bridge. It is a really cool bridge. It is a bridge, and uh, we want their voices to be heard, their artistic voices to be heard here, in lower uh, the lower lot of our park in beautiful uh, Lewiston, New York. Well, that's a lot like our friends at uh, Starlight Studios right there on uh, Delaware Avenue in downtown Buffalo. Absolutely. Too. That's a beautiful program. Well, we've got a lot of great art makers and art thinkers, and you guys are among the best. I mean, we already saw uh, how great you did with uh, Art Alley in oh, downtown yeah. Niagara that's Falls right. and brought that, that street bird. back to life. Yeah, I remember you that. Know, I can't, I got to get my, you know, coffee fix is one thing, and I got to get my art fix. And you guys have done it again. We're doing our best. We're wrapping it up tomorrow. It's been uh, two months. How long months, has it taken? Two months, two months of work. July 1st? Yeah, July 1st. Yeah. And so we've been up here about four days a week, some days uh, five days a week, sometimes till two in the morning. It's been a hot lot. 
Does the do yeah. lights go on in here? They yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, it's not the best, but it's 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 serviceable. Yep. It's a little bit like See painting it? with a candle, you know. If you could work it. Did you ever bring an egg out here? That's what I want to know. Did you see if you could fry an egg? <laughs> well, funny you should mention, we've been calling the project, you know, our mural team name is the Solo Ross. The project is called the Solo Ross versus the Red Hot Colossus Lot. Oh. <laughs> That's the name. It's a long one. It has been a, a nasty hot lot all yeah, summer, but it it's has. been fun. It's been super fun. Until then, cats and chicks, keep, keep watching, watching the, the skies. skies. Just keep watching the skies. prefers a life of play to work. So, who doesn't? Well, I won't allow it. I will not stand by and see him throw his life away. Well, that's for his own good. I'll stop him somehow. Sure you will. Don't you care about this? How it affects me? Frankly, Otto, I've had it up to here with you and your precious son. I don't care what you do with him. Just leave me alone. So that's what it's come to with us. Is there nothing left? We didn't have a heck of a lot to start with, lover. You got what you paid for. There were no guarantees. Oh, Vicky, can't we? We can't anything. Can't you get that through your head? Vicky.
Whatever did you want? Don't you feel anything for me anymore? Otto, we've been married five years. The honeymoon's over. Not for me, it isn't. <laughs> Otto, stop it. Vicki, I love you very much. You love your son. And the stupid fish. But you knew that five years ago. For months on end, you've left me alone in this house. You and Richard tied to that lab of yours. Well, if you'd really loved me, you would have taken me out. Gone on trips. Well, a hundred things married people do together. Not use me when it was convenient for you. How can you say that? I have given you everything you've ever asked for. There are some things even money can't buy. Oh, please, darling. Let's start all over again. You've always wanted to go to Europe. We can see Paris. Oh, it's too late, Otto. Can't you understand? It's too late. Vicki, we can't go on like this. Can't you even try to make a new start? Yes, I'd like a new start, away from you. I won't let you go, Vicki. Do you think you can stop me? How? How, Otto? You're mine, and I keep what's mine, always. Always is a long time. I wouldn't count on it. Vicki, you're up. Oh, what's the use? Just tell him I'm going out with the girls. Uh huh. Okay. Malibu Shack. About half an hour. Okay, now don't be late. Okay. Bye. Oh, Becky. Come here. What is it, darling? Where do you think you're going? Oh, I'm going out with the girls. You've got a date, haven't you? Why, Otto, you do surprise me. <laughs> Becky, I don't want you going out tonight. There's a killer loose around the beach. A killer? Oh, really, Otto, that's reaching, even for you.
Yeah? Play that new song, will you? Which one is that? More than wanting you. Sure. It's much more than my just wanting you And it's more than my mere having you Can't you see we were meant to be Lovers now and forevermore When I look into your eyes, my love I see all that I've been dreaming of and I know the time has come for us to be one, so won't you be mine? It is true that I have roamed the sea. I thought it was my destiny to spend my life alone without a love of my own. It's much more than my just wanting you, and it's more than my mere having you. Can't you see that we were meant to be lovers now? No surfboard. Let's go home. Oh, Tom, I left my fins up in the blanket. Could you get them for me? Oh, you'd forget your head if it wasn't attached. Richard, help! Oh. 
Rex, it's not true. Why should I kill Tom? It was some kind of a monster. A crazy looking thing with a, with a big fish head and some kind of a claw. Mark, wait a minute. A monster here on the beach? Look, he's all clawed up. Just like Bunny was. We'd better call the sheriff. Richard, you can't believe that I did it. <laughs> I'll call the sheriff. Brad, watch things, will you? You bet I will. <laughs> When did this happen? Just before I called you. 20 or 30 minutes ago. Somebody sure got it in for you, kids. This makes two. You think there's a connection between Bunny's death and Tom's? Nobody else has sighted a monster, did you say? I know it sounds crazy, but I swear that's what I saw. You've got to believe me. I was walking down the beach when I saw Tom struggling with this, this thing. I called to you, but you didn't hear me. By the time I reached Tom, he was lying on the blanket, dead. Well, what happened to this thing, this monster? It ran away. I tried to follow, but it was too late. There's your monster! I saw him! Shooting Tom! Killing Tom! You did it! You, you, you! Easy now. Take it easy. She's crazy. She's wrong, Sheriff. We'll go down to the station, and you, young lady, can make a written statement of what you've seen. Are you arresting Mark, Sheriff? Not for the moment. I just want his statement. This young lady's made a serious charge. I've got to look into it. Scott, stay here with the body till the ambulance comes, will you? I want pictures of this whole area for the boys down at the lab. You kids get some clothes on, then we'll go down to the station. I might as well get all these statements at once. Sue's pretty upset. Does she have to come now? She'll be all right. The doctor at the station will give her a sedative. Scott, stop him! Oh, He's out of range. It's no use. So your friend saw a monster, eh? It looks bad, Sheriff. But I can't believe he'd kill anyone. I know, Mark. Well, somebody's out after you kids, and right now he gets my boat. Oh, thanks for the wonderful evening, Paul. Just like old times. I'll call you soon.
set you a mark. Hey, take it easy. It's my car you're driving, remember? Don't worry. You know, that's the first time I was ever in a police station. All those questions. I know what you mean. They made me feel guilty. I sure wish I knew where Mark was. Richard, do you think the sheriff was right? That the same person that killed Bunny killed Tom? Well, what if Mark's right? What if it isn't a person at all? Some kind of a sea monster? Oh, that's a scary thought. I don't think I'll ever go down on that beach again. Not till the killer's caught, anyway. You know, Dad and I were working on mutations at the lab a few months ago. And Dr. Schuller in Switzerland put out a paper on the same thing. It seems that by certain radioactivity in KCL beams, he grew a turtle to three times its normal size. Do you really believe Mark's story? Mark's not a liar. He had no earthly reason to kill Tom or Bunny. The only thing the sheriff has on him is Sue's accusation. He wasn't even on the beach when Bunny was killed. Well, we didn't see him anyway. No, it's not Mark. I had a very funny feeling about all this. Why hasn't anyone else seen the killer? Why has it struck only one of our group? What could it possibly have against us? What if the killer is someone we know? Maybe it's something about the area. Listen, Janie, both killings occurred in the same place, right on the beach below my house. What's your house got to do with it? Not the house, but the area. What if there's some place for the killer to return to, to hide and wait in? That rock cave, for instance. Hey, where are you going? Taking you home, and I'm going back to the beach and look around. Oh, no, you don't. I'm going with you. If you're not, it might be dangerous. Well, then I'm definitely not going to let you go down there alone. I'm going with you, and that's that. Shouldn't be here, I guess. Well, the sheriff's men have been all over the sand and they haven't found anything. Wait here, Janie. I'll just be a minute, honey. Okay, be careful.
I guess I was wrong. I couldn't find a thing. I was so sure there was something about this place. Oh, let's get out of here. This whole place gives me the creeps. We'll go to my house and make you some hot coffee. Guess I'm not a detective after all. I'll have to find another way to help Mark. We've got to stop him, Sheriff. I think he's gone mad. Now, take it easy, son. We'll stop him. Hurry, Sheriff. He's getting away. No, he won't. Car 127. Car 127. This is Sheriff Michaels here. Come in. Over. Car 127 reporting. Scott here. Over. All right, Scott. Be on the lookout for a... Uh... Was he in that white MG that just took out? He must have taken Janie's car. Scott, it's a white MG convertible. He should be passing you on the Hill Road just about now. Apprehend immediately, but use extreme caution. It's our beach killer. He's... I just picked him up. He's turning into the Tri-Canyon Road. I'll continue the chase until further instructions. Over. Good. Stay with him. I'll get the other canyons covered up. 10-4. He's boxed himself in. Attention, all units. Attention, all units in the Tri-Canyon Road area. Sheriff Michaels here. Be on the lookout for a white MG convertible. Cover Malibu Canyon Road. I'll cover the Cliff Mountain Road myself. Report immediately as soon as vehicle is sighted. 10-4. All right, you kids, let's go.
did he do it, Sheriff? I'm afraid he thought he was doing it for you. For me? That's right. Michaels, calling Sheriff Michaels. Car 127 reporting. Come in, please. Over. Michaels here. Go ahead, Scott. Over. Suspect now turning into Cliff Mountain Road. You should sight him any minute now. We lost him. Look back there, Sheriff. He must have gone over the cliff. You're right. Come on. I'm going down there. It's no use. You couldn't get within 50 yards of that car. You know, like cats, like that was the perfect movie to show to all of our friends and fans out there. And you know, you know, maybe Bird is right. Maybe we should have our own offbeat cinema coast to coast film festival. And we'll just go from beach to beach to beach. From from uh, we'll start here in Buffalo, and we'll make our way to Hawaii, and uh, you know, and then we'll go out to the West Coast, and then we'll go to the East Coast, and then we'll oh, go yeah, north. Yeah, yeah, man, I can totally dig that. Theo, like we'll go from beach to beach, we'll dodge the seagulls, and we'll live our lives like Moondoggy and the original Gidget. How cool would that oh, be? Oh, that would be too cool. That would be so far out. Cats, you know, if anything, this got us thinking about how, how fleeting and invincible summer does come always at the exact same time, and we are so happy to celebrate that through film. And you know, I think tonight we have uh, we've started our own new offbeat cinema summer, uh, summer tradition. Uh, every year, we will celebrate the summer with a film, and we hope you will join us each and every year. Each and every week, we want you here each and every week, though, to watch the movies that must be shown: the good, the bad, the foreign on offbeat cinema. And until then, cats and chicks. Hey, each and every night, keep watching the skies.
And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.